Welcome back to our Equip series on biblical counseling with myself and Dr. Dave Hooper. Yeah. We are back and at it. This is our last one, though, so make sure you listen close because we are talking about one of my favorite things, which is compassion fatigue. Um, it's not one of my favorite things in the sense of I enjoy um, experiencing it, but I do enjoy um, talking about it and understanding what it is. Um, so we're just going to jump on in if we're ready. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to give a definition of compassion fatigue. It's apathy or indifference towards the suffering of others as the result of overexposure to tragedy or challenging situations. To put into my own words, I think um, we can experience compassion fatigue when we are continually just experiencing heavy emotions from other people or just, I know, um, being in ministry and also just being a disciple, we are often listening to some heavy things from people or just listening to people who are experiencing troubling situations. And over time, that can really weigh on us if we are not addressing it or even approaching it in a healthy way. Um, I know for myself, I had never even heard of the term compassion fatigue um, until going through school and then even um, just having a conversation with a friend and I was sharing with her, I just feel so heavy and I don't even fully get why because I'm not really going through anything. Mm. And my friend listened, and she's like, oh, like that sounds like compassion fatigue. So that kind of piqued my interest in it. So I'm just really grateful we get to have a whole episode talking about it. Yeah, and, you know, as someone being in a ministry for, uh, I guess, now about 30-plus years, um, I'd never heard of that term either, but I've experienced it mm. most definitely. And, you know, it's, it's almost, almost the nature of the beast when you think about the fact that we are called by God to be like Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus <clears throat> lived his life pouring himself out for others. Now, we look at that, and I think sometimes what get, gets lost in all that is the fact that Jesus had a very a supremely solid understanding of himself and his relationship with God that allowed him to be able to do that. Um, none of us are Jesus and so sometimes what ends up happening, I've found, is that our giving sometimes comes from an empty place, mm. and that's when I think compassion and fatigue kicks in. And so it, it does kick us back to really our walk with God and a very, very clear and healthy understanding of who we are in God's eyes that gives us that, con that, that comfort and security that allows us to continually pour out for others. And if we're not refilling that well, so to speak, then it's going to be very, very hard to give to others, and we'll, we'll experience this fatigue. Yeah, that reminds me of one of my favorite scriptures in First John, and it's, we love because he first loved us. And I feel like when we are not operating on that love of God and just being aware of what we're experiencing, then we are not living out that freedom we can have in Christ. We're just so focused on like our own capacity of love that we can't even go as far as we can with Christ. And I feel like it's just so important to keep that in mind and be aware of like, man, like life is hard and it's just going to keep getting hard. So how can I handle it? How can mm -hmm. I help others handle it and really be there for them? Yeah. And so many of you watching this uh, episode are small group leaders and you have really, you're dedicated to Jesus, uh, to the church. And you have been, many of you have been giving um, in a small group capacity perhaps for years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, you know, it, over time, you know, the challenges of giving and loving people can can carry a toll, you know, on us if we're not careful. A couple of quotes, I think they're really helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. I found doing some research on this. Um, uh, I don't know who this guy is, but he said it well. Um, he, he said, we have not been directly exposed to the trauma scene, but we hear the story told with such intensity, or we hear similar stories so often, or we have the gift and curse of extreme empathy, and we suffer. Mm. We feel the feelings of our clients. We experience their fears. We dream their dreams. Eventually, we lose a certain spark of optimism, humor, and hope. We tire. We aren't sick, but we aren't ourselves. Mm. And I, the first time I read that quote, it just, it just hit me like a like hard because I thought, wow, I, this is, this puts into words very eloquently feelings that I've had mm. in ministry and, you know, just pouring myself out. And then at times seeing people fall or, or hearing their stories. And, and after a while it becomes so much that it's just, it's hard to keep wanting to give. Yeah. And it's a good indicator because it's like, 
you were feeling it so strongly because you were empathetic and right. you feel with people. But I feel like when we aren't addressing this compassion fatigue, then we are just going to burn ourselves out and I'll dive deeper into burnout as well. But the goal is to be healthy disciples for as long as we can. Um, and that empathy is a gift from God in a way that we can feel with people, even right. though we haven't experienced it, mm-hmm. but it's just so important to address what, what is going on with others and what's going on with ourselves. Right, right, right. What, what are some of your experiences with compassion fatigue? Ooh, um, let me dive in a little bit. Um, just my personal experience with compassion fatigue. Um, and I know I've mentioned this in a few videos, so I'm not trying to wear y'all out. But I worked in foster care. And for two and a half years, I think I wasn't fully grasping the weight of that. Um, for those children who are entering foster care, it's due to neglect and abuse. And these are just very heavy topics that I was inserting myself in to help. But over time, I wasn't addressing the weight it was really having on me. Um, So after a few years, I was just finding myself so sad and downcast and not fully understanding the root of why. Because I remember I was just talking with friends and I'm like, man, I don't understand why I am so sad because I I work, I have a great community at church, um, I have a very balanced, fairly balanced life. But I was so confused of why I just felt so sad. And that was when I learned about the phrase compassion fatigue. Um, and that just naming a feeling is so helpful because it just helped me not feel as alone or as crazy because I felt crazy. I'm like, why am mm-hmm. I feeling this? Um, what is this? So I think naming it is so powerful. And I know I've kind of alluded to burnout. Um, they are a little different. So I just wanted to clarify real mm-hmm. quick. Compassion fatigue is more of the emotional state. Um, burnout, I do have the definition for us. It's a state of either physical and, or mental exhaustion that's caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. Um, so burnout is more a personal thing as well. Of like, I feel burned out, likely because of how I'm living my life and how I'm doing maybe my job or just different things that I'm doing. The burnout is more personal, whereas compassion fatigue if Dave is telling me all of these really traumatic things and I am empathizing with him, that also weighs on our hearts maybe heavier than we realize, especially over time. So the same thing, if I understand this correctly, burnout is more of what we kind of do to ourselves in terms of how we choose to live, whereas compassion fatigue is the, is the same feeling, but maybe more, it comes more from our empathy and concern and helping others. Yes, okay. to my understanding. I know not trying to throw out too many words, but I encourage you to even look, um, sec- or compassion fatigue is very similar to secondhand trauma. Um, and that's just not your own trauma, but just hearing really traumatic situations. That is a form of trauma for yourself. And that's why it's called secondhand trauma. Um, but these things are very heavy. And I think that's why we have a whole episode dedicated to this topic is because these things should be talked about. And I just hope I know like when I felt crazy, I'm like, why am I experiencing all of this sadness when I'm not necessarily going through it myself? I think in ministry and as leaders, um, we experience really heavy things and we should be talking about our feelings and naming them rather than I know I can often suppress or try to go numb. Um, And I actually have a quote from a wonderful woman. I'm sure many of you have heard of her, Brene Brown. Um, I have a quote that I'd love to read. She says, crazy busy is a great armor, just keeping yourself crazy busy. It's a great armor. It's a great way for numbing. What a lot of us do in that is that we stay so busy and so out in front of our life that the truth of how we're feeling and what we really need can't catch up with us. And I know this can often be a problem for all of us as ministry leaders. I know you're probably doing a lot. I'm sure you work and I'm sure that you have friends or maybe families and there's just a lot going on. So I think it's really important to not go numb and just be aware of our feelings. Um, A really convicting example is obviously Jesus when he's on the cross. He had every right to go numb when he was on the cross and when God actually did leave him. Um, I know he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And at that moment, he has all the sin of the world. And I don't know about you guys, but like I would want to go numb and suppress, not really feel all of that. But Jesus is the perfect example. He felt all of that pain and he understood that like his purpose is bigger than that so i want, wanted to just share that not because jesus was walking around quoting compassion fatigue and burnout 
but more so because it's so important for us to not go numb and suppress. And if we don't address compassion fatigue and burnout, that's likely where we'll go. Yeah, I, and this is such a great conversation. And having been in you know, ministry for many years and worked with small group leaders, both as one and then working with uh, small group leaders, this is compassion fatigue is very real. You know, mm -hmm. I think you know, we go in year in and year out and we're giving, we're giving, we're giving, and there's always needs. There's always, they always, never go always, away. They do not go away. And they might change a little bit from season to season what kinds of needs there are, but they're always there. There's always yeah. demands on our time, on our emotions. Um, even if you remove church leadership from the equation and you're just trying to raise your family, that's a big, mm -hmm. you know, there's some of that. So, you know, th this is such an important conversation because we need to be able to, to, to refill or to recharge. To uh, The answer to compassion fatigue is not to have no compassion. Yeah. It's actually to be able to be empowered to continue to have compassion and not be worn out and not become fatigued in that. And so we have some, some do's and don'ts uh, for you to, to kind of share that hopefully will help you uh, regardless of where you are, right? I mean, maybe, maybe you're listening to this and you're, and you're in the midst of mm. burnout or compassion fatigue, or maybe you're on top of the world and you think, well, why is anybody talking about that? I mean, I thought everybody was perfect in the kingdom of God. So, oh. uh, you know, in, you know, good for you and, um, <laughs> you know, enjoy that moment. Yeah. Um, but so here are some things that we like to share. First of all, you know, understand that the pain you feel is normal and acknowledge any in anything that you may be going on with you. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual to experience pain or to experience mm -hmm. concern or or even to to feel um, just drained yeah. from time to time emotionally. And I feel like we can feel so lonely in our pain or even mm -hmm. just heard many people say like no one understands my pain like my pain is my own and I wish others could understand it and I think I always just go back to just that phrase like nothing is new under the sun of everyone experiences pain in different capacities in different ways and there are also billions of people on this earth mm -hmm. so I think our pain is more common than we even give it credit for yeah. and naming it and really processing it is so much better than just ignoring it or not really wrestling with it. Yeah. And one of my favorite sort of spiritual practices I've talked about before, but really helps with this is called consolations and desolations. Mm. Uh, I think it's a Benedictine practice, but, but really the idea is, is finding the movement of God in both the good and the bad things. That's my, kind of my easy way of explaining it. It's like the highs and lows, right? Mm. Uh, every day, making that part of our spiritual practice and how we process what's going on. Yeah. So it's not that God's with me. Yay. When things are good and Oh, where's God? Oh, hang boo. When, when, you know, things are bad. But rather, hey, there's, God is in, present in both those places, and both those spaces are, are, are a place where God is mm -hmm. and, and walks with us, and I think it's very helpful. So consolation, there's, here's some definitions for you, is that which occurs when some interior emotion is caused within the soul through which it comes to be inflamed with love of its creator and the, and the Lord. Similarly, it is experienced when the soul sheds tears which move it to love, uh, move it to love for its Lord, Tears of grief for sin, passion for Christ, every increase in hope, faith, and charity, and every interior joy which calls and attracts one toward heavenly things and the salvation of one's soul by bringing it tranquility and peace in its creator and Lord. So in other words, anything that fills us spiritually, hmm. you know, and not just good things, even sometimes bad, but we're, but we're like, okay, my, my repentance is, 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 yeah. is uplifting, right? That's it's a negative thing. It's a good thing. You know, all that is a consolation. It's, it's a good thing. Um, desolation is everything contrary to consolation. It's the obtuseness of soul, turmoil within, impulsive motion toward earthly things, or disquiet from various agitations and temptations. These move on, one toward lack of faith and leave one without hope and without love, and they feel separated from the Creator. So mm. what pulls you away from God, what pulls you toward God? And I think when we can verbalize and recognize when we're being pulled away, then we acknowledge God in that moment and we return to him, right? But, mm -hmm. but doing this as a practice, just highs and lows, consolations, desolations, is a really great way to stay connected mm -hmm. so that we don't get to that burnout. Yeah, and it's stage. just so powerful that like God never leaves us in the highs and the lows. And I think even with compassion fatigue, as powerful as naming it is, I think it's even more powerful just knowing God never leaves us in that compassion mm -hmm. fatigue and that burnout and whatever we're experiencing, God is always with us. And I know I find a lot of security in that of whatever I'm experiencing and whatever I'm going to experience in the future, God never leaves us and he's always with us. And yeah. I think that's just 
so alleviating like man like god is never gonna leave me amen for that yeah our night of lament uh mm -hmm. that we had here this, this probably dates this this video right now by saying that we had this night of lament back um on good friday and i was amazed at the experience yeah. um we we imagined it dreamed it but didn't know exactly how it was going to go and mm -hmm. the the way that that was so cathartic for everybody present i was i mean as as you know, and the idea was let's bring it's a desolation, right? Let's express our desolations. And, and rather than than drawing us from God, I think it drew us closer to him. Right. Absolutely. And that's the idea is that if we're giving voice to these things within us, it's not wrong to feel things. It's not wrong to yeah. feel moments of separation. It's not wrong per se. But if we can take those things, voice them and bring them to God, then it's powerful. Um, it, it allows us then to be refilled and mm -hmm. we're not we don't become fatigued. Yeah. So um, another uh, way that we can, uh, or tip, I should say, to help us get, overcome compassion fatigue would be to cultivate a relationship with another mature disciple. In other words, have somebody in our life that is going to, that, that can be somebody that we rely on, talk to, share with, um, be mentored by, mm -hmm. or even mentor, but just having those relationships in our lives uh, that... that um, of, of other mature people because we get kind of crazy in our own thinking sometimes oh absolutely yes <laughs> so it definitely happens uh second timothy four uh to share a verse so paul writes this about timothy now this is a case where paul is actually mentoring timothy it's not even like paul is he's paul's mentor but mm -hmm. that relationship was an important one to paul and he writes in second timothy do your best to come to me quickly for demons because he loved the world has deserted me and has gone to thessalonica uh, Cratians has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Titicus to Ephesus. Uh, when you come, bring the cloak that I left at Carpus with, at Troas, with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will pay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side, gave me strength, so that through the message, uh, th uh, through me, the message might be fully proclaimed to all the Gentiles, and they might hear it. And I was delivered from the mouth lion, the mouth lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every attack and will bring me safely into His heavenly kingdom. You know, this, this example that Paul has here, you know, is really his example with Timothy, their relationship. And he's like, man, come, come on, come on. I need you to get here. You know, I, I, I value your relationship. You know, other relationships have fallen by the wayside. That's hard. Yeah. Right. I mean, I can imagine the challenge that Paul might have felt for pe compassion fatigue. Yeah. Right. When you have close people to you leave mm, like that. It's hard. Yeah, it's tough. Um, and so, so we've got to have those relationships, you know, we got to have the, our go-to people and it could be people more mature than us, maybe someone a little bit younger than us, but as long as they're mature and they can help us navigate, navigate these waters is important. Definitely. Um, next point I want to talk about is just taking care of yourself. Um, and I know self-care is often a term thrown out quite a bit. Um, I know in my own schooling, I would get annoyed with it at times. It seemed like we talked about it so much of like, take care of yourself, take care of yourself. And I'm like, got it. Um, and then when I actually need to put it into practice, I did not because I feel like, and I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think we get so invested in things and so passionate or just we lose sight of how to truly take care of yourself and what that even looks like. Um, I think society preaches at us that self-care is more selfish in the sense of focus on yourself, cut out things that aren't good for you, cut out people that aren't good for you, and just kind of this mentality that the world revolves around ourselves. And I love self-care and just in the way that we're partnering with God in that. Um, God is with us in that self-care. God wants us to take care of ourselves. Um, I know even for me, just working in ministry, I really honed in on practicing a Sabbath. And that was such a beautiful form of self-care because I was getting filled by God and just getting filled with him. And I love that God has a personal relationship with all of us. Like self-care can look differently. Like for some people it's taking a bath. For other people it's going to see a movie. And I think even in those moments, God is with us when we let him in. But it, just from what I've learned and I think even experienced in um, just seeing the world, it's really important to know that like when you're taking care of yourself, do that in a way 
that is giving to you, yes, but not in a way where you're consumed with just being selfish, if that mm, makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and a verse I wanted to share is Matthew 22, 37 through 39. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that last part, um, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We have to love ourselves. We have to be aware of what we're feeling and just taking care of ourselves to truly love people. Um, so I think that's just an important verse to have in mind of it is the second command. So obviously it's very important, um, but mm. we really need to prioritize, okay, like, do I love myself and how am I showing that to myself? How am I taking those actions to make sure that I'm okay? Yeah. And some of the other things that go along with this, you know, are, are the basics really. I mean, things that can be state need to be stated, but really are probably understood by all of us. We just have to do them, right? Like things like uh, fighting negativity with gratitude, you know, mm -hmm. being grateful. Uh, I think if we took time every single day to express the things we're grateful for, mm. come rain or shine, you know, it, it, we're going to, we're going to have, refill that tank yeah because there's always so much to be grateful for even in the most desperate and dire of times there are things to be grateful for and so if we can learn to express gratitude and fight negativity with mm -hmm. gratitude um that's gonna be so helpful i mean first thessalonians five eighteen says give thanks in all circumstances mm -hmm. um i think we can always focus on that give thanks and go yeah okay that's a good idea but in all circumstances mm. that's a little bit harder even to when do. it's hard even when it's thanks. hard right even when you're not really happy with how things are going yeah you know being grateful in those moments is a way that we can things to do right to help us overcome uh any types of compassion and fatigue uh regular times with god you know mm. again goes without saying if we're not regularly connecting with god you know we're um you know, we're in trouble, <laughs> you know, and Jesus did it. I mean, I think it's probably yeah. the secret sauce of Jesus, right, was that he got up early in the morning, he got out, he spent time with God, uh, he had that connection, he refilled his, his tank, uh, so to speak, um, mm. with his relationship with God. And then, you know, another thing we can do is focus on what we can do and not what we can't. Mm. That's a big one, right? Just, I mean, let's focus on the things that we can change, things we can have influence on, and not, not get sidetracked by the things that we can't. Yeah. Um, we end up getting, we can worry warts when we, when we, you know, we get all anxious about the things that, that we really have no control over. And what really good is that? And it's the worst because I feel like when, like for me, when I worry or like when I am wanting to be in control, even when I feel like I am in control, we never are. So it's just such a funny concept to me of, I can, we, I say I, and I mean I, but <laughs> we can get so fixated on the aspect of control that we kind of lose sight of the big picture. We don't see the big picture. We don't see really everything that God is doing when we have that mentality. Um, right. So it's just yeah, control's a big one, man. The anxiety that comes <sighs> from that's a whole nother episode. We don't yep. really have time for, but we don't. Uh, but really, I mean, that's kind of what it comes down to. And we get burned out because we, you know, look, none of us are in full mm -hmm. control of everything all the time. And so if that's what we want, then we get worn out pretty quick. Definitely. That's not compassion fatigue. That's burnout. Yeah. And now we know the difference. <laughs> now we know the difference. That's right. So what are some things we shouldn't do? Okay. What, what we have those are the do's, but here are the don'ts as we wrap things up. Um, don't blame others, right? Mm -hmm. That's not going to help you. It's not the church's fault. It's not your friend's fault. It's not your wife, your spouse's fault. It's not your kid's fault. It's not your parent's fault. Um, it's not your long lost pet forgotten past's fault. I mean, we can blame everything under the mm -hmm. sun, but the more you do that, you're, you're not going to be in a healthy spot to yeah. avoid compassion fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, also just um, falling into the habit of complaining. I know that it can be easy to just get in a headspace where we just feel so negative about everything and want someone just to listen to us right. to vent. Um, and Philippians 2, 1 through 4, it says, do everything without arguing and complaining. And I think that's so important to remember of, man, like if I'm in this headspace where everything I'm saying is just negative and I'm just wanting people to hear me and my complaints, I really need to dial it back a bit yep. and yep. not do that. Yep. Don't look for solutions in a change of scenery. That's not going to help. Like a lot mm -hmm. of times we think, oh, well, if I just had a different, other, in a different space, different place, different, you know, then I would do better. Mm. And the truth is wherever you go, there you are. That's, that's sort of the, 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 you know, the truism of it. Right. And, and, you know, if we don't change, if we don't, um, repent or whatever it is we need to do in our thinking, then we, we very much may be overcome by burnout and compassion fatigue. Mm -hmm. But 
so the answer isn't in the scenery. It's in it's within. I guess that's the point, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's changing us, not changing what goes on around. Definitely. Um, um, another don't is just working harder and longer. Um, I think when we're feeling all of these things, sometimes we can just have that mindset of like, okay, like I just need to do more. I need to just put myself out there and continue working hard. And that can just lead you to a very dark place of not addressing all the needs you have. So definitely don't go too far on that other side of just working so much harder, rather dial mm. it back and really take care of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, don't self-medicate. I think this mm. is something we can do um, in many different ways, whether it's alcohol, television, um, you know, we can kind of sink ourselves into things to kind of to medicate, to kind of take our minds off of the stressors or the things that are going on in life. And Definitely. that, that doesn't help. Yeah. That I think even help. a form of self medicating is just escapism. So like watching Netflix all the time or binging mm -hmm. a show, like mm -hmm. it can be very broad in that um, category. And last one we wanted to talk about was just um, do not focus solely on yourself. Um, just that perspective of we're in community. We were made to be in community is so important. So I wanted to close out with a verse. It's Ephesians four, two through six it says, be, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all. So at the end of the day, we, yes, need to take care of ourselves. Yes, need to address things like compassion, fatigue, burnout. But at the end of the day, we also need to have that perspective like Jesus. Like our purpose on earth is to make disciples and to yeah. focus on others. But to first do that, we also need to focus on ourselves. Which brings us back to where we started. Compassion That's is cool. actually a good thing. Um, compassion fatigue is simply the emotional fallout sometimes when we're not healthy. Uh, it does. The answer is not to to stop giving. It's not to pull away. Uh, it's actually just to change our tactics, to be compassionate in a better way, which means attending to some of these things in our own lives, perhaps spiritually, that maybe we've been neglecting that mm. have led to some of that some of that um, fatigue. So hopefully these things have helped you guys. Uh, certainly we're, we're hoping that you are uh, more equipped as you, as you work with people, love people, help them, counsel them, and God willing, these things will, uh, will go a long way to helping you towards that end. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you.